Okay, so I've taken the leverage helper off the front, and I had to cheat a little bit. If When I designed this brake, I was originally looking for this upgrade to this brake. I was originally looking for a half-inch slab of metal uh, that I could use, and I wanted it wider. I wanted it like 8 to 12 inches wide. Uh, what I ended up with is a 5 8 by 4-inch slab of metal. Um, it was cheap. I, it was a piece of scrap, so I, I went for it. But the problem is, is that 5 8 inch wide plus the approximate 8 inch setback you have from the nose, uh, these 18, these dual 18 millimeter flanges are really, really hard. So I actually had to kind of flex this material up and kind of cheat to get the bend line underneath the nose. And it does flex out in the middle, but I've done this operation before and it'll still bend straight, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, <clears throat> I've got the tensioning rod in place again. And again, we have to kind of guess on the bend angle because there's no good way to get the protractor in there to measure uh, the bend angle. So. What I'm hoping that I don't have a problem with is getting this 5 8 inch slab to actually bend this piece of metal um, without any problems. That was a problem when I did the landing gear channel because that was 40 thousandths thick, but this being only 16 thou, I think it should bend okay. So we're going to give that a quick shot and see what happens. And that bent just fine. So again, a little bit over bent on the ends compared to the uh, interior, but it looks pretty good. This stuff is so flexible, the 16,000, so you can just, with your hands, you can kind of tease the angle a little bit more if you need to. So what I'm going to do is loosen it up. I'm going to put the bending helper back on. I'm going to pull the final, or the middle bend out, which is a 90 degree bend. Once that's done, I'll flip this around, insert it from the back, bend the uh, final flange over, and then I'll, what I'll have to do, because I can't bend far enough with this brake, what I'll have to do is take a, a board or a straight edge and kind of finish off the last bit of it to, to close the gap a little bit. So we'll come back here in just a minute. All right, guys, so I've got the uh, skin slit out here. You can see the uh, little jog there that the little 18 millimeter flanges make. I can tease those angles a little better manually if I need to once uh, the time comes. Uh, they look pretty good as it sits. That's what we use the test patterns for is to make sure that we can kind of eyeball what our angles need to be, especially in these tighter areas. And then, of course, we have to determine if we can make that pattern of part to begin with, with a simple test piece. So this just needs to be bent at 90 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and bend that real quick. I'm actually running into... <laughs> my uh so that's a little odd problem there i'm not used to having a twist in that spot so i'm not sure what's going on with that but the nice thing is you can cheat a little bit if you just put a little bit of wood spacing in there. And that looks to be about 90 degrees. It's, getting, it's starting to get a little bit of a curve to it, but it's not a big deal. That happens. So, that looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and uh, finish off the other bend here in just a second. Okay, you can see the profile of the skin here. That turned out to be pretty much a perfect 90 degree angle after I put that extra block of wood in there to overbend it. And the issue is I'm running into this tensioning bar, which that's a band-aid solution to a problem that really requires surgery. So uh, the brake needed to be designed differently from the start, um, but the brake has evolved over time to meet the demands of this build. And those, because I was inexperienced when I started this, I had no idea that <laughs> those were gonna be an issue. So um, that's one of the reasons the table rebuild uh, ended up happening the way that it did because as the brake evolved, it got heavier, uh, the project changed and my needs changed. And so, you know, uh, experience is everything in this as far as I'm concerned. So the way we're, where we're at now is uh, getting ready to do the final, final bend on this part here. If I can get my little bushing piece here. out of the way. Now normally I would have done all four skins, you know, I do one bending operation, do another skin, do the same bending operation, I would have done that all, all at the same time. 
uh, rather than have to go back and forth with each skin, with each bending operation. Uh, but since this is the very first skin that I'm doing, I wanted to make sure that I had it down right. Even though I did a test pattern like this, I wanted to make sure that the full skin itself was going to be able to be uh, bent in that fashion. And so you're watching my actual first attempt at bending the skin properly. So, and furthermore, one of the reasons I didn't bend this part first and then focus on these is because I needed the piece of material to be able to slide in and out completely through on one side until I was ready to do the last bend. So <clears throat> I could have bent this first flange regardless of that, but then I needed to um, you know, be able to slide in and out based on the way that this brake is designed. So literally these bending, the bending order for these were one, two, three, and four is the final one. So I'm just going to bend that one as far as I can. I'll probably use that block of wood again here in a second, and then I'll have to throw it on the table and finish it off. Either way, that's about as far as I can get that without kinking it further with the piece of wood. So. So that's that, I'll take this apart, we'll finish that bend off here in just a second. Alright guys, so I've got the skin up here on the table, I'm taking this uh, 12 foot furring strip. So I've just got that clamped to this, I don't want to clamp it down too hard because I don't want to dimple the skin. And all I'm going to do, essentially, continue to kind of fold this over as much as I can because it's got to go quite a ways. So, I'm going to check that against my test pattern. I think I need to bend that a little bit further. So you can see, well, I just squished that down. So you can see my test pattern is here. I actually need to go a little bit further with that. Although again, I don't want to overbend it too much, but basically crimping it down with all my weight on it is about the only way to do this. And you kind of want to do it evenly because you don't want the very trailing edge of the of the form to be because you're pushing on it, you're not bending this in a break all the way completely. You don't want to end up with a wavy trailing edge because that will affect your aerodynamics a little bit, although it's probably not that crucial given everything else that's going on. Of course, that was off the end of the table, so... <laughs> and I crushed that, so... A little too far on these ends right there, so... But that's easy enough to tease back up into position. So, here's our, here's our finished skin profile, right here, right? And that matches the test piece that I made, right here. And I'm going to take some measurements real fast and make sure that we've got that all built properly. And I'm hoping... Turned, turned out pretty pretty darn close. So we want 97 on this side. We're exactly there. They don't give you a reference measurement for this line, this side. They do, however, give you one for here. We want 176. So yeah, we're we're not even a millimeter off. This is my relief cut. I took a little more off um, when I was filing that than I needed to. So if you measure up to the bend line itself. It's actually 175, 176. So I'm happy with that. This flange turned out 18, which is perfect. And this flange is 18, which is perfect. So not, a, not an entirely perfect part, but close. Um, we're just off maybe by 
looks like about a millimeter end to end here. And a lot of that, of course, has to do with your where you're measuring your reference from. So if we include, yeah, if we straighten everything out, measure from the appropriate spot, it's it's pretty pretty close. So not even a full millimeter off if you measure from the right spaces. So very happy with that. I thought uh, that was going to be a bigger challenge than it was. It's very tedious, obviously, with the bending operations. So what I will end up doing is um, I've got three more skins like this to make. So what I'll do is I'll do the same operation on all three, one right after another, set up the brake, do three more operations on each skin, you know, set up the brake again, do the, you know, do them in succession that way so that I'm not constantly changing one right after another. But, um, well, I'm really excited about that, guys. Uh, I was worried about that. It's a lot of material to screw up if you mess it up. So, but that is the slat skin profile. And, uh, now I can, once I get the other three skins built, I can start actually making the slats, which I'm excited about because, again, there's no skeletal structure to the slats other than the ribs and a couple of doublers. There's no actual spar in there. So really happy, guys. Uh, hope that, hopefully that video helped you out a little bit. Uh, if you've got any comments, concerns, questions, please let me know. Thanks a lot. That's all for this video. Be sure to like, comment, or subscribe, and let me know if you have any requests for future video content. As always, thanks for watching, and good luck with your projects.